like the rest of the Big East set for conference play, but are the Panthers actually ready? And if not, how far will they fall? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz. Glad to be with you on another edition of Parrish's Three Pointers. The three things that CBSSports.com's college basketball columnist Gary Parrish thinks that you should know. And let's bring him in as we welcome him in only on CBSSports.com. Gary, Happy New Year to you, buddy. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. How'd you celebrate? You know, I uh, hung out during the day with the kid, then dropped him off with the grandparents, and uh, the wife and I went to uh, see a band play. So we took in the new uh, New Year in a smoky bar. All right, so you actually celebrated the New Year the right way. I celebrated on a couch sick, but that's for another story, and it was not from celebrating the right way. Garrett, we'll get to Pitt in a sec, but let's start this edition with the team that just beat them by 25 points on national TV. That's Dayton, uh, an upset that got to give you some props here. You called this weekend in your weekend watch list, but it's also something you've been screaming about for three weeks. Why have you been saying that the Flyers should have been in the top 25 a long time ago? Now, in fairness, I didn't have them in my preseason top 25, so I wasn't totally on the ball here either, but I have had them in there for three weeks. And, um, you know, they go on the road, they win at Louisville. Impressive. Every, you know, and I look a lot at scores, who you play, how you play against those teams, and they just had one slip up and really been impressive everywhere else. Uh, then you started looking at the makeup of the team. It, it's uh, you know returned five of their top seven scores, including Brian Roberts, who's who's now averaging 19.3 uh, points per game. They had so they had a lot of experience returning. They have balance. There's only one guy uh, playing more than 28 minutes per game. So it's all the ingredients to better what was a 19 uh, 19 win team uh, from last season. So I'm not sure anybody expected them to be 11 and one with wins over Pitt and Louisville at this point. But this is not totally out of the nowhere. Uh, you know, this, this is not a huge, huge surprise that they're a pretty good team. And they're off to that best start at 11-1 and since winning its first 14 games 52 years ago. A tough test on Wednesday against Akron, and then next week they begin Atlantic 10 play, which we've talked about before will be very, very difficult as we go through here into March. All right, meanwhile, let's get into Pittsburgh. Uh, it was off to another start with double-digit wins before suffering that first loss at Dayton. But... They've suffered a lot more than that, Gary. We know Mike Cook is done for the year. Point guard Levance Fields now out two or three months with a broken bone in his left foot. They begin conference play Sunday at Villanova. What should people expect? A different version of the Pitt team than what you've seen, uh, you know, that, that beats Duke in the Garden and, and, you know, had vaulted itself into the top ten. Two, you know, let's be honest here. Uh, two of its top four scores are down. That's 22.3 points per game for a team that doesn't score a lot anyway. Two experienced guys. And so... Look, Sam Young and Dewan Blair are, are good enough to keep them competitive in the Big East. And I still think they'll make the NCAA tournament. But, you know, ask yourself this question. What team could lose its second and fourth best scores and not suffer because of it? You know, just look at some of the, the teams around Pitt in the rankings. Uh, you know, where would Texas A&M be without Joseph Jones and Donald Sloan? Uh, what about if Indiana had to start playing tomorrow without D.J. White and Armand Bassett, or Texas had to start playing tomorrow without A.J. Abrams and Connor Ashley? They would suffer. And so, uh, you know, it's always good to be optimistic, but I, you know, I think it's a bit naive to believe that Pitt's not going to slip and, and slip a, to, a, to a pretty heavy degree. And, and obviously tough to do that when you start conference play without those two guys. They do have a, a one last test to get ready without those two guys with Lafayette on Wednesday, but then again, it is Big East play. All right, you mentioned Texas and what they would have to do without those two guys. Uh, they, they don't have to play without those two guys. They play a lot of minutes, but they're not winning right now. Texas, after that 11-0 start, has dropped two straight to teams from the Big Ten. What's the difference between playing those two good teams versus the 11 they won when they also played some good teams in there? Well, I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. They probably aren't uh, good enough to, to be the type of team that should go into UCLA and win. Uh, probably not quite uh, bad enough to lose at home to Wisconsin. So, um, there's some there's some uh, some balancing out going on here, if you will. Um, a lot of people, you know, everybody focused on Kevin Durant, the loss of him. But what what many people didn't speak about was that they returned four starters. So it's possible that you know they were nothing more than a team uh, with experience early, taking uh, taking advantage of of November and early December games against other teams that were trying to figure out how to play with with new key components. Tennessee trying to figure out how to play with Tyler Smith. UCLA trying to figure out how to play with Kevin Love. So, so maybe that's what happened here, and, and you know, it's, again, the truth is somewhere in the middle. But, you know, again, I, I think they might have caught some people by surprise, but the bottom line is still this. If you would have looked at Texas' schedule in the preseason, tried to predict where they were going to be at this point, you'd have probably said 10-3, and three, 
with losses to UCLA, Michigan State, and Tennessee. So in reality, they're 11 and 2 right now with wins over UCLA and Tennessee. So that's so still better than most would have predicted, which is my way of saying I think things are going to be okay despite <laughs> this two game losing streak. Uh, the one thing that may come back to bite them, though, Gary, they don't have a lot of depth. They uh, all five starters are getting a little bit more depth with uh, this week against TCU. Guy coming off off the bench who has not played all season, but uh, their five starters all play at least 30 minutes. That could hurt them uh, down the stretch. All right, Gary, it's the end of the show. It's the end of the segment, which only means the one thing that everybody looks forward to. It's time for you to rant. What's it this week? As stunning as it is to ever hear that somebody was passed out behind the wheel of a running car in the middle of the road while under the influence of drugs or alcohol, I was not surprised to hear that Herb Pope did exactly that this past weekend. The guy was a total mess throughout high school, so much so that Bob Huggins stopped recruiting him. I mean, seriously, if Hugs won't recruit you, you're a flawed human. But New Mexico State <laughs> still signed Pope, and they were thrilled to do it in the name of tremendous upside. Now they're paying the price for discounting the value of character. And it's difficult, you know, in times like these when, you know, to not wonder if coaches are ever going to learn that sometimes uh, you can't take a kid out of an environment and change him. Sometimes the, a bad kid is just a bad kid. New Mexico State has certainly fallen on hard times without Reggie Theus. Gary, thank you very much, sir, and uh, we'll get you up with you again next week and read everything from you this week. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, there you have it, the voice of the words you should be reading every single week, the voice of college basketball, the words of college basketball. And, of course, you can check out all of Gary's articles on CBSSports.com. And don't forget to watch In the Paint each and every week with Bill Raftery, fresh every Thursday. That on the site and all over the CBS Audience Network. For GP Gary Parrish, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.